right, we're back. We're on page 52 of math analysis. Um, so we're moving along. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can write equations for sine and cosine uh, functions to match graphs and tables and like different representations of the information. And if you look at this little paragraph here, it contains a, a, a pearl of wisdom that is super important. And it is this, an actual frightening amount of your success in this course depends on your ability to create accurate graphs of the trig functions quickly and efficiently. Not kidding. A lot of your success in calculus, um, in this class, in a lot of things, it's just gonna depend on like, can you write a trig function? Uh, can you graph a trig function? Can you write an equation from a graph? Like those two things, so important. So let's see if we can actually um, figure out how to do that. So we are given a sinusoidal graph. Now notice I didn't say you're given a sine graph or a cosine graph. The reason for that is that we don't actually know, right? So your inclination on this to so probably say it's cosine because right here, we're at a maximum and cosine starts at a maximum, you know, and you'd have this, there's one nice period of that. But what if you were the type of person who said, I want to start here. If you start here, you're at an intercept going to a minimum. That's a negative sine graph. What if you're the sort of person who says, no, I want to start here. Well, if you start there, you're starting at a minimum negative cosine. Look at me tracing that really well. Negative cosine graph, but you could keep going. You could start here at a positive sine graph. So all that we know is that it's a sinusoid. We don't know like what the specific thing is. There's actually an infinite number of equations that will match this graph. That's a big deal. So what we want to do is figure out how to find all the information for that. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to just identify some things, right? So the maximum definitely happening at four. Actually, maybe I'll use a highlighter just to like actually show that. So all of the maximums are happening at four. So that's important because if we know the maximum and we know the minimums and the minimums you can see are happening at negative two, we sort of implicitly automatically know the sinusoidal axis because it's gotta be halfway in between them, right? So add them together, divide by two, four plus negative two, maybe I'll actually show that. Uh, four plus negative two divided by two is gonna be one. So the sinusoidal axis is gonna be at y equals one. Now amplitude, remember, is the absolute value of A. That's important because depending on what we're starting with, A might be positive or negative, right? So if you start at zero, start here, A is positive. Start here, A is negative because you're going to a minimum. Start here, A is negative. Start here, A is positive. So it just depends on what you're choosing. So the amplitude though is definitely, let me actually, um, let's put in the sinusoidal axis. So this is our sinusoidal axis. The amplitude is how far you can go from the sinusoidal axis. So that's this distance right here. So the amplitude is definitely three. Now you can get that in a number of ways. So I'm gonna say three, which is equal to uh, four minus one, right? That's one way to get it. Go from the maximum to the sinusoidal axis. What's the distance? Or uh, it could be one minus negative two. That's the sinusoidal axis down. So the first one, we went from here to here. So top takeaway bottom gave us three. For the second one, we went from here to here. Top takeaway bottom gave us three. Alternatively, we could find top takeaway bottom here but then take half of that. So any of these methods will work. You just have to decide which one you wanna do. And usually you just intuitively do it. Like it's, there's not a lot of thought that goes into that, but three is the value. So that's what matters. Uh, the period, so you have to like decide how you're gonna find the period. I like to, whenever possible, which it almost always is, but not actually always is, um, I like to go from, I'm looking for a good color here. I like to go from like a maximum to a maximum if I can, right? So I would do that and say that the period is two pi. You could also go from a minimum to a minimum, right? And you can see that would be two pi or you can go intercept to intercept to intercept, right? You need to go more intercepts because they're are more intercepts per period. So you could have done this. 
Um, all of these would give us 2 pi, though. So the period is 2 pi. And if the period is 2 pi, and the period is 2 pi divided by b, so 2 pi divided by b is equal to the period, which equals 2 pi in this case. So we know that b for this function is definitely 1. So b is probably the trickiest thing because you have to actually like solve for it. I actually solve for it every time. Um, I could like solve that in my head, but I always set it up because why would you not if you have that option? So giving the starting points indicated below, right? Trig equations for the graph above. Okay, so here we go. If I'm gonna start at x equals zero, let's figure it out. So it's a positive cosine because you're starting at a maximum. So starting at a maximum, positive cosine. So it's going to be positive cosine. So f of x equals positive. So it's going to be positive 3 because the amplitude is 3. Cosine. b is 1. x, the shift is 0 because we're starting at 0. And then the sinusoidal axis is 1. So if we graph that, we will get exactly the graph that we are looking at. What if we start at pi over 2? So at pi over 2, which is here, starting at an intercept, going to a minimum, which trig function does that? Well, it's negative sine. So negative sine, which means our amplitude is still 3, but now we're using negative. So here, we'll say f of x is going to be negative 3. It's a sine graph. B is 1. X minus our starting point is pi over 2. And then the sinusoidal axis is 1, so plus 1. So if we graph these two, they will completely coincide, and they will give us the graph that we're looking at above. What if we start at 3 pi over 2? So why are we skipping pi? I don't really know. Um, so pi would have been here. So 3 pi over 2 is here. So we're starting an intercept going up to a maximum. What is this? That looks like a sine graph to me. So it's positive sine. So f of x is going to be positive sine. So 3 sine. b never changes x minus the starting point. And then the sinusoidal axis never changes. So really all that can change, I mean, it's kind of a lot, but all that can change is sine and cosine can switch on and off. And then you can have sometimes positive A, sometimes negative A. Everything else is going to be the same, but then you slot in whatever the starting point is because, you know, obviously you're going to do that. What if we decide to start at 2 pi? So starting at 2 pi is here. So starting at 2 pi, we're at a maximum. So what starts at a maximum? It's got to be positive cosine. Actually, it's, it basically feels the same as the first one that we did, but the starting point is different. Right? That's like if you were running a race, you would give somebody a two pi head start. Um, it's different. Uh, so it'll, it'll have exactly the same graph, but it is not the same. So you got to actually put in your starting point because eventually we will want to have things kind of race along these and whatever, and you want to make sure that you're like getting things in the right spot. So I think if we graph all of these, which I'm going to do in a minute, we will get exactly the same graph every time. Now, what would the equation have to be if the starting point was x equals 295 pi over 2? 295 pi over 2. So, well, think about it. Um, we could have started at 0 and we get positive cosine. Pi over 2 and we get negative sine. Pi and we get negative cosine. 3 pi over 2 gives us positive sine. Then we're just going to get coterminal things. Right, so if I add the period, which is two pi to zero, I get this positive cosine again. If I add the period um, to pi over two, I end up here, I just get negative sine again. If I add the period to pi, I get three pi, I just get negative cosine again. This question that we're being asked is really, what is 795 pi over two coterminal to? What is 795 pi over two? Coterminal to if the period, so the period actually really matters here. If the period is 2 pi, these are like those um, strango questions, like right where we have like uh, strangs and dangs. Um, so you have to know what your, your period is to know like how to figure out coterminal. So in this case, 
I really want to do, uh, so what's like an intuitive way of doing this? Well, 795, so if I try, I want to do this. I want to divide by 2 pi, oh wait, over 2, and then divide by 2 pi, right? Because I got to figure out like n. Um, so this is 795 over 4. So 800 is, so this is like 800 minus 5 over 4. Okay, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Um, why did I think that made sense? 800, so that's 200. Oh, I, I have an idea of why. It's 200 minus 1.25. So 200, so 198.75. But the key thing here is I need the floor of this. Floor, floor, floor. So, you know, when you don't know what you're doing, just stumble around until it makes sense to you. Floor. And then the floor of that is 198. Okay. But really, I just know that it's 198.75 rotations. So I'm actually going to do it a slightly different way. I'm going to say uh, it's 198.75 rotations. Rotations. Therefore, coterminal to 0.75 rotations. So that's uh, 3 fourths of 2 pi, which is 3 pi over 2. So it's the same as 3 pi over 2. 795 pi over 2 is the same as 3 pi over 2, which means that if we wanted to write a function for this, I have to move everything. That It took me a while to work out the logic on that. But I think sometimes I think that's good, you know, to like, like, I don't immediately see how to um, convey these ideas all the time. So whatever I got at 3 pi over 2, I should get the same thing. So I got a positive sign. So I think that my equation, my equation should be f of x equals 3 sine 1 x minus 795 pi over 2 plus 1. All right, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to graph all five of these. I'm going to see if they, they overlap. And if they don't, I might cry because this is a lot of work. Um, but let's see. So uh, I'm going to start a new, I'll just start a new problem. And then in the problem, I need a graph page. And we're graphing all of them. 3 cosine of 1, x minus 0. I know it's weird to write that, but I like to write it. You get that. OK, so now we will know if we are right, because we will only ever see what appears to be one graph. 1x minus pi over 2 plus 1. So far, so good. Uh, 3 sine 1x minus 3 pi over 2 plus 1. Yes. And then uh, 3 cosine 1x minus 2 pi plus 1. So far, so good. And then finally, this is the one that you know could have definitely gone the worst. Why are we on graph 5? What, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, what is wrong with me? Um, three sine, uh, it's really hot. That might have something to do with it. I doubt it, but maybe. And then plus one, this moment of truth. Yes, got it. All comes down to coterminal. What is the principal coterminal angle? And then you'll get the exact same function. Um, so you have to be able to work that out. But uh, I'm gonna go back to the notes and show you them for one, I don't know, one second. There's really no reason to do this. Uh, except like on, I don't know, when I first started making these videos, I decided like I'm always going to try to end on the notes. Um, so there you go. I had to find the principal coterminal angle. Um, and I did that by effectively finding out like how many full rotations and then what fraction of a rotation and then work from there. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop it here, come back in the next video and do more of these uh, because they're really good practice and you got to get good at it. So I'll see you there.